This is an episode you can play in school. Welcome back to I Have Yet To Name This Show, where I look at 400-year-old texts, usually Shakespeare, and explain what it means because to the modern reader and listener, it's a little confusing. On the menu today is Sonnet 116, Let Me Not To The Marriage Of True Minds Admit Impediments, which if any of you've ever been to a wedding, it's most likely been read at the reception or during the ceremony, or if you've ever been searching for love poems, this one probably came up, and most people will have a hard time understanding it, so let's dive right in, shall we? The first line, let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. All right, already kind of weird. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Impediments meaning something that has been impeded, something that has been impaired, something that has been, uh, you know, kept from, it has issues. So let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. When true minds are married in true love, there's nothing wrong with it. For love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. For love is not love that alters when it alteration finds. Love does not change when other things change. If you are with someone and they start to change and you notice a change in them, true love doesn't change in the same way, nor bends with the remover to remove. It doesn't remove itself when other things are removed. When Things change and things leave, love stays steadfast in its place. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. A tempest refers to a storm, a very strong storm, usually out at sea. So love looks on tempests and even in the wildest storm, it's never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. So. If the star to every wandering bark, when you are lost, when you are in need of navigation, you can use the stars, if you can see them clearly, to know your way around. Which way is north? How do I get home? You use the stars to navigate. So love is the star to every wandering bark, to every wanderer. When you are lost, love is your guidance. Whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. We don't know the true value of love. What is love really worth? We don't really know. Honestly, we're not that smart. It's way too powerful of a thing. We don't know the value or worth of love. Although we try, we take its height. We do try to measure love. This sonnet even does that. Love is not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. So love is not time's fool, meaning love does not bend to the will of time. Time does not have any control over love. Whatever time asks love to do, love doesn't do. Even though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come, his meaning time. Rosy lips, rosy lips and cheeks, I apparently don't know cheeks from lips. Rosy lips and cheeks over time fade. You get older. You're the uh, time doth transfix the flourish set on youth, as Shakespeare says in Sonnet 60, which we'll get to another day. But Time ages you, and time will change rosy lips and cheeks, it'll make beauty ugly, it'll make life into death, but love doesn't change with time. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even... Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. So love does not alter with time's hours and weeks, it concerns itself not with hours and weeks or, or months or years of time, love bears itself out even to the edge of doom. The worst thing, the end of all things, love bears itself out up until the last moment. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. If this be error, and upon me proved, means if I'm wrong about this, if I am mistaken, I never wrote a line in my life and no man has ever loved ever. If what I'm describing isn't love, then there is no such thing as love. He's basically just solidifying saying, I am so right about this. That's what that couplet means. I hope that was helpful. If you want to see more around my face, there's the to be or not to be speech that I explained, Sonnet 135, which trust me, you want to watch that one. I also do a thing called speech jam poetry where I read different poems with a speech jammer. It's really funny. I get really frustrated over there. However, swearing in those videos, so uh, be cautious if this is in the classroom. Oh, turn up top. Good night. <laughs>